Dogman and Bigfoot battling over a human female. Dear Scary Stories NYC. I have a Dogman story that is also a story about a Sasquatch or skunk ape and a human woman. I was driving my old Ford through the Everglades this past summer, right? And that was where and when I seen all this stuff I'm about to tell you. So you'll want to sit down and strap in because I'm going to jump straight into it. I was riding into the Big Cypress National Preserve on the Loop Road over there, and I got the sudden urge to head out into that jungle forest and camp out for the night. It was either that or go home to the wife and kids with no air conditioning and no money to pay the bills. So camping in the heat inside a National Tree Preserve seemed like it would carry less arguing along with it. I also left my cell phone in the car, hoping that I would not have to hear about any bad news till at least the morning. I didn't move to Florida until I was in my mid-twenties, but still my friends who were born here call me Florida man, you know? My wife refuses to accept that I am a person who leads a life of constant adventure. Now if I had gone home to get yelled at, I would never have seen these two cryptids that I saw. And then, I would have no story to tell you. Well, well, I mean, I guess I'd still have a story, but it would be about boring things like helping my son with his math homework, even though he already understands math better than I ever will. How's he ever going to grow up to be a man if his parents do his math problems for him? So I walked into the preserve over there, which is a pretty dense and creepy looking place if you ask me. I know I'm supposed to say that it's beautiful or whatever fancy words people use when talking about vines that will rip you and bugs that will bite you. It's sort of a nasty kind of place and for some reason I couldn't even be sure of. It also made me feel like my life was somehow in danger. I pitched my tent anyway and I ate some beef jerky and some nuts as I sat there listening to the strangest kinds of animal noises off in the distance. Sometimes the sounds were so weird and bizarre that I actually chuckled at them. It sort of sounded like dinosaurs battling with elephants. I tried to visualize what I was hearing, but I literally couldn't. I wasn't worried about it though because I'm not particularly bright that way. I was frightened by some vague feeling, yet not at all concerned by what sounded like conflict between very large and angry animals of some kind or another. Now does that make sense? I'm wondering why I'm feeling scared, but I'm laughing at the scariest thing that existed in a 10 mile radius. Look, sometimes people don't even make not one little bit of sense. And me? I'm one of them people. At least, most of the time I am anyway. So the more tired I got, the more worried and weirded out I got because the animal sounds did not fade out and they did not go away. One part of me wanted to lie down and stretch out while the other wanted to run back to my car and drive the hell back to my wife who hates me. I ended up doing neither as I just sat there and wiped sweat out of my eyes as I listened to those horror movie sounds getting louder sometimes but never going away. Soon I was feeling them in the earth beneath me. I don't mean they had gone underground. I mean that something was literally shaking the ground underneath me as they moved about. By this point I was breathing into my peanuts bag to try to keep from hyperventilating. I felt like I was either having a panic attack or maybe a more serious kind of attack. When the sources of the noises and vibrations erupted into my part of that jungle forest, the shock was so intense that my chest seized up and I kind of tipped over on my side. I was still conscious and I could still watch what was happening, but I was also clutching my left arm and wondering if I was going to die. In that situation, I was kind of being murdered by my own fear. The monsters that I was watching were almost like an afterthought by then. Yes, there were monsters fighting as I lay there and died that night. That's what I could tell St. Peter at the Pearly Gates. 
Who needs monsters or carnivores to eat you up if you keel over every time you get scared? No wonder my kids don't respect me. So I was laying there on my side on the ground watching these creatures and sort of interested in what they were doing, but I had my own fake panic attack drama to mainly cope with. So I noticed that there was a Bigfoot, and it was very tall. It had long, wild hair all over, and resembled something between an ape and Chewbacca, but it had a face with a nose sort of like a Native American. At least the face appeared more human than animal. This hairy man was carrying a Caucasian human woman wearing some kind of a dress. She had lighter brown or darker blonde hair, and she seemed to be fully conscious. Needless to say, her facial expressions moved between worried and completely scared. She was not having a good day, and it was her predicament that sort of started to wake me out of my panic attack. When I start to get scared and frightened, I'm only worried about myself. When I see someone else in trouble, though, I can sometimes forget my own problems and want to get my act together so that I can help them. And no, I wasn't concerned about her just because she was pretty or anything like that. It didn't matter to me that she was so nice looking or that she had so much better fashion sense than my wife. I mean, obviously I noticed her very full figure, how could I not? But that didn't mean I was feeling anything but pity for that poor little thing. I wanted to rescue her from that Bigfoot. But the Bigfoot was really only a small part of this situation, as you probably noticed just from the title of the story alone. That Bigfoot carrying the lady was being followed. And when the big hairy dog-headed man that was chasing him came into my view for the first time, he let out a bellow that shook the ground under me and caused tree leaves to vibrate out a brief whistling, clattering hum all around him as he released it from his lungs. This guy was bigger than the last guy. I know what they tell you, that the dogman is not as tall as the Sasquatch, but that he's far more dangerous and feral. Well, this guy seemed both completely savagely out of control, as well as taller and faster moving than the Bigfoot. I began to wonder how the Squatch had been keeping away from the werewolf all that time. I had been hearing them fight off in the distance. The Squatch seemed to be less dangerous than the Wolfman. I mean, sure, either of them could take me down without much effort, but that much larger Dogman had claws like Freddy Krueger and teeth like a T-Rex. Not only could I not understand how the Sasquatch had survived this long, I also couldn't understand how he had gotten the young woman away from the werewolf either. They were both clearly fighting over the woman, although what they planned on doing with her, I really couldn't tell. Initially, I had thought she was struggling to get away from the Bigfoot, but then it began to dawn on me that the Sasquatch might possibly actually be trying to save the girl from being eaten alive by the Dogman. Maybe the Sasquatch was the good guy here. On the other hand, maybe he only stole her away to do his own brand of terrible things to her. Or maybe humans are on his menu as well. I mean, how the heck could I know? I couldn't know. So about the one and only thing in that entire situation that I felt I could be certain of was that the Dogman was the biggest problem. I mean, let's face it. He was the biggest everything. Suddenly, a plan popped into my head. I got up and ran out back toward the road to get my car, right? Like all of a sudden, I didn't feel like I was going to faint, and there was hardly any chest pain at all, because now I felt like I had a chance to save this chick's life, right? And so no matter what you may think of me, or what my wife tells you about me, which is probably going to be a lie anyway, I got brave in those few moments on that night. And no, I wasn't doing it to try to get with the young lady. I really only wanted to get her away from the monsters and out of the Everglades, basically. I wasn't in pickup mode. I was in save the princess mode, okay? So I drove my old Ford on the same path I had walked in on 
and I was hearing tree branches cracking off and flying as we barreled through a space too small for my car to really fit through. Even over the sounds of the engine bouncing all around, I could hear the two big animals beating the living daylights out of each other in the distance. I only had half a plan of what to do. I figured I'd drive up to that Bigfoot, beep the horn really loud, and hope he dropped the lady. Then, I called to her to run and jump in the car, and hopefully the Bigfoot and Dogman would be too scared of my loud car horn to grab her back. Then I guess we'd drive out of there. It was the only plan I could come up with, so I went with it. I drove forward into the dark forest. When I saw the Dogman up ahead, I hit a wet muddy patch and skidded almost sideways into a tree, then another tree. Somehow I found myself knocking smaller and deader trees down on top of the dogman. Then I literally was driving my car over the trees and the creature, all the while beeping my horn like a complete lunatic. I somehow made it back onto the path where the Bigfoot dropped the girl as he saw me racing toward him. I watched as he loped back into the woods. Then I shouted at my window to the girl. I told her to get in, and I drive her to safety. She had this weird expression on her face that I hadn't expected, and she ran away from me. Not toward me, but away. I saw that she was running back to the trees that the dogman had gotten trapped underneath. She was running right back into a completely different kind of danger. I had just gone through all that, only to see her running right back into trouble. I got out of the car, shouting at her that she was running toward the dogman. I tried to explain that I was only trying to help, and that we had to get out of there. When I caught up with her, I touched her lightly on her arm. She flipped out. She was like, don't touch me, and stay away from me. I tried to tell her that I was only trying to help. And she tried to kick me in my zipper area. If you know what I mean. This girl was like an animal. And I was only trying to save her life. I was starting to realize that I was in as much danger as she was. And that I would better get out of that place. Whether she came with me or not. I started heading back toward my car. And it's a really important thing that I did too. I mean, I would not be here telling you this now if I hadn't. Why? Because the trees behind the young woman moved as the dogman lying underneath them flexed muscles far stronger than any ever used by any human being. I saw this guy's strength in that moment and as I shifted gears and prepared to bug out I saw something even more incredible. Instead of running away from that dogman rising from the wreckage I had created the crazy woman ran right into the creature's hairy arms. Up over his shoulder he tossed the human female as he dropped down into a four-legged position and then she rode him as though she were riding a horse. Once they ran off, the woods exploded with the sound of the Sasquatch tearing all kinds of bushes and trees out of his way to chase off after the two of them. I drove out of there feeling confused feeling inadequate and sort of feeling rejected by my own species. What did that dogman have that my Ford didn't? Hmm. Maybe it's better not to think about it too much. Now I know why I don't try to be a hero very often. It's kind of embarrassing to risk your life trying to save someone only to be told to stay away. It's probably easier just to think about yourself because then it can hurt when people choose a carnivorous forest animal over you. I drove around for a couple of hours looking for another place to camp out where the landowners wouldn't shoot me or have me arrested. When I thought I'd found a good spot, I remembered I had never packed up my camp from the original location. I really didn't want to go back there. But then again, I didn't want to go home and I didn't want to sleep in the car. So, I went right back to where I started, walking into the dark off the road in the Everglades, toward the tent that I had left in those woods. 
This time, I could not hear any fighting or bellowing off in the distance. In fact, it was eerily quiet. Spooky quiet was what my daddy used to call a night like that one. Each step I took, my heart started beating harder. And then, I felt the very beginnings of the panic attack starting to come back. My eyes went weird and my knees got weak. My chest and my left arm hurt. And it almost felt like I was going to faint, you know. But then, growling and seething with really crazy looking anger was that big giant Bigfoot again. I guess the dog man and the girl had gotten away, judging by the look on this guy's face and the way he was seeming like he was about to take it all out on me. I saw that he had already torn my tent to shreds, so I just started walking backward, and that Bigfoot started walking forward. I had never seen a creature with eyes that seemed lit up like that. It looked almost like the red in an exit sign when it's lit up. That's how I know it wasn't a really big guy with a need for a shave or whatever. That was an animal, not a human. Human beings do not have eye shine, let alone eyes that light up in bright red. I tell you the look on his face was human enough, though. I could read what he was thinking clearly. And he was thinking that he was going to make me pay for what I'd done, for allowing the girl to run away with her preferred monster. I had meant well. But the road to hell is paved with good intentions. While I was moonwalking, I tripped on a rooter or something, and I fell backward onto the ground. I saw the look on the Bigfoot's face change, and I knew he was getting ready to stomp me out. I knew it was over. I knew I was done for. And then this cop started flashing his light around, asking if anyone knew who this Ford belonged to. He had seen my headlights from the highway. I shouted and screamed and cried that I was sitting there on the ground in the dark and the officer came over to me as the Bigfoot disappeared back into the darkness. The cop asked me what the heck I was doing and I sort of sat there bawling real tears for a while. I mean, I thought I was about to get brutally and savagely taken out by the Bigfoot. So I was over emotional in that moment. The cop kept trying to ask me what happened, but I just told him that I had taken a leak in the woods and that was all. He wanted to know if I was okay, and so I got myself back under control as we walked back to my car. I remember asking him if I was under arrest, and he laughed and said he didn't arrest people. I still don't know what he meant by that. Maybe he wasn't a cop? Maybe he was a park ranger or something? But wait, can't they arrest people too? After I drove away into the night with an awful lot to think about, I remembered I'd never asked his name. I'd never noticed it on his badge either. He came out of nowhere to save my life, but I'm not even sure who he was. And if it weren't for him, I'd never have been able to tell you the story of the time I saw. <laughs> Dogman and Bigfoot battling over a human female. C.S. She's the best. If you disagree, then go get blessed. <sighs> that winter wind is blowing stronger and stronger. -er. I need a brand new winter coat. Or else maybe some layers or something so I can get through the coldness this year. I know they say a Bigfoot's fur can keep him alive even in the Himalayan mountains. And that is technically true, but it doesn't keep you snug like a nice hoodie does. I was starting to wonder if I was going to have to steal something to wear from a park ranger or something. But then our patron Saint CS came through with some funding for me to get myself some new socks and a jacket or a coat or something this week soon. Without CS, I don't even know how we would be able to keep the show on the air. There are a few others I can say the same about, and we're deeply grateful to each of them. If you'd like to find out how you can become someone as admired and thanked as CS herself, then just take a listen to our international TV spokesmongrel, Henry Lee Dogman. Thank you. Thanks, Biggie. And thanks to all of you for watching this far. 
If you liked it, please click like. If you'd like to see more of our work, please subscribe. And also click that bell icon if you'd like to be notified when we put out a new episode. To become an executive producer, you can donate to us through the thanks button under each of our videos or through our paypal.me slash peterbernard209 page. To receive cool perks like secret uncensored Dogman episodes far too wild to ever run on this channel, you can become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button. Or join our PayPal subscribers club at peterbernard.com. Joining either at the $3 a month level or above gets you access to our over 25 hours of secret uncensored Dogman stories available nowhere else. Do you have a scary story about Dogman or some other kind of high strangeness that happened to you? Let us know by emailing us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or by leaving us a voicemail message at 804 Lascary. You may need to call back on that when it cuts off after, I think, three minutes. And if you don't want to do any of that stuff, thank you for simply watching to the end. Good night, and have a scary tomorrow. Come back for more Scary Stories.